We're here now in the race hall at the National Motorcycle Museum next to one of the most recognisable bikes from the collection, but also probably the most legendary bike that Triumph produced in that period. It's Slippery Sam. And the reason we're at the museum today is to celebrate the launch of Norman Hyde's new book, Winning Ideas, which was information from the development and race department at that time. Now, 10 things we need to know about this bike from the period and from the Boldor at the time, which is where this sort of got its name, name from. Isn't that's it? right, that's right. Up till the 1970 Boldor, it was just one of our several race bikes, uh, but it had this monumental and totally unexpected oil leak, um, which of course, cause it a bit of a fluster when uh, you're trying <laughs> yeah. to lap score a 24 hour race. Uh, so um, whilst the bike was in the pits being wiped down, uh, we were trying to work out what the hell the problem was. Uh, and we couldn't find answers, so we had to send it out again. So hence they went out and it was, the oil was causing the bike to slip at the back. And well, we also did our issues. very best to, <laughs> to wipe, wipe yeah. any potential problems. Yeah, we didn't the riders uh, dropping it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then half an hour later, it came in again. And same problem, and we had no idea. And to this day, we never worked out what caused it. And we said, if it comes in a third time, it's retirement. And it never came in again. Whatever caused it, when when it dealt it with it, it was just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but the name stuck. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the you know the name Slippery Sam is iconic, isn't it? For, yeah in the world of Triumph and race bikes, British race bikes yep. in particular, and this is the one, and it was a pretty successful machine, wasn't it? Yeah, then, I mean, if in, 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 the, in that race, it, uh, with Percy Tate and Steve Jolly on board, it finished fifth, uh, uh, which, which was a good result, but of course we did, uh, our other two bikes did a little bit better than that, we did win the race. So some interesting facts from that particular race then, Norman. Sure, what well. can we uh, share with viewers? Unlike today's bike, uh, we don't, don't have QD rear wheels. Okay. So Dunlop made some special TT100 tyres, like that's a TT100 tyre. Uh, they were cut, so the tread was two mil deeper. Right, okay. Uh, so to help them last, because I mean, we're doing sort of over 2,000 miles. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, but that meant when they were new, they, they would weave. Right, because okay. Because the blocks of rubber were moving about. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, when we were getting towards the last six hours, we did get concerned because the tyres were all almost bald. And if we'd had, you know, there were very black clouds and we were worried that if there was some rain, there was going to be uh, a big problem of grip. Um, the other uh, sort of problems that we had were, you can see the bike behind here with the Baldor lights on. Um, They'd been made specially in the shorter fairing so that we could work on the side panels where necessary. Um, the track was so bumpy, you know, very old, like our Brooklyn's, very oh, old. Oh, yeah, it's a bank bumpy. second, oh, yeah, concrete, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was so bumpy. I mean, I had to go into Paris, of course, no sat-navs in those days, huh. go to Paris and buy some body belts. So right. I had to go and buy half a dozen body belts for the riders because uh, it was getting really uncomfortable. Yeah. And because the hands were swelling up, lots of problems like that. But the lights that we'd made, the, the mountings, were much too flimsy. This circuit was making the headlamps wobble all over the place. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so we ended up, we used the, the garage, the workshop of Jean-Pierre Beltoise, who was an ex-Formula One car racer. Right. And he let us use his garage, which we did. Uh, we, we constructed some new stuff for here. Uh, and we also had to um, oh, repair the bike. Paul Smart, uh, who was picking up Maggie Barry Sheen's sister from the airport when yep. he should have been learning where the circuit was, fell off on the first lap oh, and no. pract his practice on the right hand side and wiped off the points and the timing cover. And that caused a bit of problem. Some challenges though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, but in fact, yeah, there was so much work. And of course, it was the first 24 hour race we'd ever done. I mean, we started with 
no food. I mean, <laughs> we're starting sort of, I can't remember, it's sort of three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and when the morning came round, you think, oh, well, the next day it's nearly over. It was only halfway through, and it's three oh, o'clock wow. in the morning. And we had to send, give money to, to, to spectators, to people, to go and get, to go and get us some food. Unbelievable. <laughs> we so, ended up, I think we, we averaged four and a half hours a night sleep for a week finishing with being up from 7 a.m. Saturday morning till 3 a.m. Monday morning. And we were absolutely stuffed. So, steep learning curve for the team, and it was a team effort. And, absolutely. And what was your part in that team then, Norman? Um, well, I was the, the development engineer in charge of Triple, so that was right. my basic involvement. But I mean, you know, unlike the way things are done today, and the way, I mean, I always remember, uh, you know, Honda have got a thousand people in development. We should do that. Well, I mean, we had about a dozen, <laughs> all right? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, the, ga the gaffer of the tool room and his wife t drove us over in their three-speed Volkswagen camper. Brilliant. All right? Brilliant. Uh, and through, through a storm like we had yesterday. Yeah, it yeah. was absolutely awful. Um, so, it, you know, very much down, you know. Uh, everybody I, I mucking in, everybody doing yeah. their part, everybody knowing everybody and borrowing what yeah. they can. And yeah. even yeah. though you're a, you know, it was yeah. a big company. I'll tell you no, another little, yeah, but the thing you remember, the, the pits had a concrete wall and it was a lower bit where you got in. By the time you got in and out uh, for 24 hours, your bloody knees were stopping working. <laughs> and then the, the signalling station was on the opposite, opposite side of the circuit uh, with no roof. So when it rained, the guys are standing in water. Oh, and the uh, the uh, yeah again you won't remember the uh, the the old wind up telephones to give right. you uh, right the army used to use yeah well of course it's it's like a big brick and because uh, it's got the brass electrode on the top so you had to hold it on the side because when you forgot you're in a panic to, this is to talk to the signalling box on the other side you put your hand on the top and you wound it up and gave yourself thirty thousand volts up your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Just to wake you up, keep yeah. you going throughout the 24 hours. But, uh, yeah, oh, brilliant. Was, uh... So a couple of interesting features looking at the rear of the bike then, uh, Norman. Silencers. Yeah, uh, crucial things, because yep. you want as much power as you can legally get. Um, when we were racing the production 650s, the th Thruxton silencers, as they were known, uh, were basically empty. They just they were a pair of reverse cones in there yeah. and went yeah. really well and were sparklingly noisy. These, uh, which contain a reverse flow element, everybody hated the style of the ray guns when they came out. <laughs> right. But eventually, when they turned out to be so good, we raced on standard silencers, right. which so we'd never, the factory had never done before. They were, they were spectacularly good. And, um, I've always liked the style of those. Yeah, no, oh, no, no. I hated them when they came yeah, out. Strange, I because nobody's cool. seen anything like no, it. You no, know? it's changed, and it didn't always go down well. But, um, but so they were perform really well as a as a racing yep. uh, silencer as well. But yep. another interesting point that you just mentioned to me on air, which is great, on the uh, on the tool or the, the, the side panel. Oil, there. That's the oil tank. Oil tank, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yes, unfortunately, Les Williams, my old chum let me borrow the bike at Silverstone for a uh, drag race meeting. Uh, so with a, an exciting intro, uh, here's Norman Hyde and fame, you know, and, <laughs> and 50 Sam, and, and I dropped it. Oops, uh, yeah. Because the, the clutches on triples tend to yield a bit before they grip. Right. And I mean, I'd got about 50 PSI in the back tire uh, so I was ready for that to spin. But what happened is it yielded and put, just put enough power through to lift the front wheel. And as it lifted the front wheel, which was fine, the, it gripped and the back started spinning and went sideways. Oh, no. So I was sort of uh, in trouble. And the oil tank still has the dent uh, <laughs> that my right knee made in it when well, so you've left off. your permanent mark in I many have. ways on here, and now a visual yeah. one that we can all see. Absolutely. Every time I come around this museum now, I'm going to tell everyone, I know how that happened, and yeah. I know the man that did it. Uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs>